On a late summer day at Purdue University, Dr. Gabisa Ejeta roams the fields of the world's leading sorghum research program. Sorghum, one of the world's five principal cereal grains, is a major source of food, fuel, and material. Tracing its origins to Africa, it is a crop of unparalleled importance to hundreds of millions of people. The story of our laureate also begins in Africa, in the hills of west-central Ethiopia. Born in the village of Wolonkomi, Gebisa Ejeta was raised in a one-room thatched hut by illiterate parents and learned very early of life's hardships. In my household, in as much as I had lots of love uh, because of the limited income, life was a struggle on a daily basis. So hunger is something that I have personally experienced. Gebisa's mother, Motu Ayano, was determined that her son would have a different future. She made a series of sacrifices to provide an education for her only child. When a school opened in the village, she scraped together the funds to enroll Gebisa. Of all the people that have made a difference in my life, uh, she is the most important. He continued his schooling in a neighboring town 20 kilometers away. This is the road that we travel on every Sunday. And we first walk about 15 kilometers and the last five kilometers is really a killer road because from here on, it's all the way uphill, all the way to the school. Finishing eighth grade at the top of his class, Gabisa was selected to study at Jima Agricultural and Technical School, where he graduated with distinction. He then entered Alamaya College. He excelled not only in the classroom, but on the basketball court as well, eventually earning a position on the Ethiopian national team. He intended to study agricultural engineering until a meeting with the head of the plant sciences department, Brahani Gebrakidan, changed his plans. He had just come back after completing his PhD at University of Minnesota. And so just about a year before he got back to the, uh, Ethiopia, he had heard of Noam Borlaug's Nobel Prize. And so he used that uh, as an incentive to tell me uh, the opportunities that one will have in studying plant sciences. Shortly after obtaining his plant science degree from Alamaya, it would be a scientist from another university in the American Midwest that would dramatically alter the course of his life. Purdue professor and noted sorghum researcher John Axtell was collecting sorghum species throughout Ethiopia when Gabisa was invited to join him. Dr. Axtell was so impressed with the young man that he offered him a place in his graduate program. Gabisa accepted and in 1974 enrolled at Purdue. As his research continued there, political unrest was breaking out back home. And there was a civil war in the country uh, in several directions and, and uh, I was advised not to return to Ethiopia. Despite the warnings, Gabisa returned briefly in 1976 to marry his wife, Sinait. The two would go on to raise five children together, but would not return to their homeland for another two decades. After completing his doctorate in 1978, he was offered a position heading ICRASAT's sorghum breeding program in Sudan. It was here he would achieve his first major breakthrough. Within five years, Dr. Ejeta had developed Africa's first sorghum hybrid, a drought-tolerant variety able to withstand Sudan's drylands. While the hybrid, dubbed Hajin Dura 1, showed tremendous potential for increasing yields, Dr. Ejeta knew that to effect real change, he would have to persuade local farmers of the seed's value. The demonstrated superior qualities of Hajin Dura 1 led to wide acceptance by farmers and yield increases of up to 150 percent. With funding from USAID, Dr. Ejeta then set out to create a national seed production and distribution system, which led to an explosion of the commercial seed industry. Thousands of Sudanese farmers have now harvested over one million acres of Hajin Dora 1, and more than a dozen seed companies are operating throughout the country. Yet despite the success of the drought-tolerant hybrid, sorghum growers in Sudan and throughout Africa were still experiencing devastating losses from an old foe, the parasitic plant, Striga. 
Commonly known as witchweed, Striga is estimated to cause crop losses of up to 40% of Africa's total cereal harvest. The parasite inflicts most of its damage while hidden underground and can lie dormant in the soil for up to 20 years, rendering traditional control methods ineffective. By the time the Striga plants emerged above ground, it had already spent weeks parasitizing the host plant, and so the damage has already been done. Trying to control the Striga through hand hoeing and cultivation is really an exercise in fertility. When Ejeta returned to Purdue to accept a faculty research position, he was determined to battle this scourge. Working with his colleague, Larry Butler, Dr. Ejeta devised a novel approach to unravel the complex biochemical relationship between the parasitic weed and the host sorghum plants. By breaking it down to simple components, the components of germination, uh, hostorial production, attachment of the rootlets, and then subsequent stages of defense responses that are being generated. Being able to examine those separately, we were able to break down this complex problem into individual components that are attackable then one by one. After nine years, doctors Ajeta and Butler developed the world's first striga-resistant sorghum. Despite the magnitude of the scientific achievement, Dr. Ajeta knew it wasn't enough the varieties had to reach African farmers. In 1994, working with USAID and World Vision, doctors Ajeta and Butler produced eight tons of striga-resistant seed for 12 African countries. They organized farmer education workshops and trained agronomists on management and distribution. The improved striga-resistant cultivars produced dramatic results, increasing yields by as much as four times over local varieties. In 2003, Dr. Ejeta established an integrated striga management project in Ethiopia, Eritrea, and Tanzania that emphasized combining the new varieties with water conservation and fertilization. Working with leaders and farmers across Sub-Saharan Africa and educational institutions in the U.S. and abroad, Dr. Ejeta has strengthened agricultural networks and personally trained a new generation of scientists. His accomplishments have inspired countless others throughout Africa, especially in his native country. On a recent visit to his village in Ethiopia, the man who was once a national hero on the hardwood was hailed as a returning hero of humanity by hundreds of well-wishers. The fact that someone from that village um, had gotten to be recognized on a global scale and that their small village was being put on a map, so to speak, uh, they really took that with a great sense of pride. Dr. Ejeta's journey has taken him from the humblest of beginnings to the pinnacle of acclaim. This year, the World Food Prize is awarded to a man whose work is not confined to a single field, but covers several. From the science of plant genetics to the creation of thriving local markets, to the training of farmers in new agricultural techniques. His scientific discoveries have been revolutionary, but he has also served as a voice of the poor working tirelessly to ensure that the benefits of his breakthroughs reach those who need them most. His dedication to that purpose has dramatically improved millions of lives throughout Africa and has earned Gebisa Ejeta the 2009 World Food Prize. <laughs>